Hey guys, and welcome back to Hot Tea. It's me, Ray, the feisty Canadian tea tuber. Just kidding, it's obviously not, and I'm sorry. I know you guys missed her. She is mostly back, but just due to the nature of this series and when I started making it, it just made more sense for me to do the voiceover, okay? Sorry. But I'm Sarah Jane, and today we are talking about Venus Angelic. Before we get started, make sure to give the like button a cute little boop and subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell for notifications. Also, follow us on Twitter. It's fun, and you can give us suggestions on what you want to see. Here's our gal Venus. She's known for being a cute little innocent doll, or at least seeming like one. And here's her mother, Miss Margaret Palermo. They're a very happy duo. See? See how happy they look on this game show? So happy. It's a happy place. I wasn't familiar with them before starting my research, but I dove quite deep and managed to compile over 600 pages of research plus hundreds and hundreds of photos and screenshots and quotes. If long dramatic stories that give you whiplash aren't your thing, here's the summary. Venus and Marge are mother and daughter who are fighting to see who's a bigger narcissist. If you want some more details, you're my kind of people, and I have spent the last month and a half compiling this for you, so I hope that you like it. Most of my information comes from the infamous forums Lolcow and Kiwi Farm. The evidence and research will be shown on the screen. I even found our queen on there. Hi queen! You're famous for looking at porn. Good job, queen. The people on the forums, the most passionate fans and haters, have been very disappointed to even what many people considered to be good videos, even one Venus considered to be a good video. So in this video, I'm gonna try and do everybody proud and include everything I can up to the present. Very quickly, I did do a poll on our Twitter to see if people would like if I did voices to differentiate when quoting people to keep it interesting and clear and everything. And most people did say yes, but a lot of people said no and I just want to keep everybody happy. So I do very few throughout this series, only really when I thought it would be helpful. I also might sing. That's never helpful. Also, I'm not claiming to be great at voices, I just like doing them. Now, please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times because we are going for a ride. This feels like a real treat. Just go through the videos and pick out the cringiest moments and laugh at them together with you. Some subjects in this video may be triggering, such as EDs, narcissistic abuse, alcoholism, and sexual activity, as well as brief mention of self-harm, suicide, violence, weapons, abortion, and incest. If you think this video may trigger you, please click off or watch with caution. Now let's take it back to the beginning. PB&J! Not that beginning, that's the opening from PB&J Otter. I'm watching that later after my snack. Okay, thanks, God. Venus Palermo, better known as Venus Angelic, is a 24-year-old YouTuber with a very strange and perplexing history and a behaviorally bizarre mother, Miss Margaret Palermo. Also known as Marge or Margot or Maggot. They both get a lot of hate, especially Margaret, and a lot of it is warranted because they're being held accountable for actions that they did themselves. A lot of it's way over the top. This video is not meant to hate on them at all. I'm gonna crack a bunch of jokes because how can I not? Because it's impossible to get through all of this otherwise, and that's just who I am. But I'm not trying to hate on them, and please do not send them any hate. They're actually both really funny and pretty self-aware and self-deprecating, so hopefully they can laugh with me. <laughs> Venus is Swiss, Hungarian, and German. She lived in Switzerland as a kid, then Spain, then London, Netherlands, and South Korea as a teen, and has settled in Japan for the past few years. While her mother travels between the fantasy land inside her imagination and her own personal hell. Her mom gave birth to her at 21. According to Marge's sister, this was done to trap Venus's dad into paying child support. People even speculate that Marge was after somebody Swiss because of their child support laws. Good old Maggie Magoo always thinking ahead. She lived off of child support and Venus's income for pretty much all of Venus's life until she escaped, I mean, moved out. <laughs> also for the majority of Venus's life, Mayo tried her hardest to live vicariously through her dear daughter. Instead of mother and daughter, she describes their relationship with Venus more like Cain and Abel. As legend has it, Venus was always a performer. She had some very small acting gigs when she was very little, and Marge taught her to model as a toddler. When Venus was 13, she begged her mom every day for almost six months to start posting YouTube videos, and finally her mother caved. That is how the original origin story goes, at least. Venus began posting videos, singing, dancing, and then started posting more makeup tutorials as she casually turned herself into a human doll. She was doing fairly well, appearing on some morning shows with her mom, building her fan base with her unusual lifestyle, and her videos about looking like a doll. Somebody released a cover of Iconopop under Venus's name, but there are mixed stories on whether 
whether it was actually Venus or somebody just using her name. Her traction really picked up around 15 when she appeared alongside Justin Jedlica, Jedlica, Jedlica human Ken doll on My Strange Addiction. People were absolutely bewildered by this very strange mother-daughter doll duo and Venus started to rise in fame due to pure human curiosity. Margot became momager and even got an article about Venus public in a magazine. Surprisingly, she wrote the article herself and took the photos. Must have been one heck of an editing job. Margot was loving the attention and loving living vicariously through her daughter. I mean, if the internet were around when Margot was younger, she would have been famous because she looked like a doll too. She really did. And she was even prettier and more doll-like than Venus. When I was in primary and secondary school, people kept told me that I look like a doll, but that time we didn't have internet, so I couldn't go viral as a living doll. <laughs> It was also very important people knew that she did have a computer, just not internet back in the 80s, and that it made this interesting noise. Like... Around the same time, Venus started a blog, and both her and her mother were active on their individual tumblers. Cute. This was around 2012-2013. Let's take a gander through some posts, shall we? One of the biggest reasons the duo was criticized originally was due to the sexual and provocative nature of Venus's style. Both Venus and Magnet denied it was sexual and were adamant she wasn't dressing as a Lolita, just as a cute little innocent doll. Innocent! Okay, I'll prove it, see, look. At this time, Venus had the goody to shoe act on lock. She played it very innocent, so innocent that a lot of questions were like, oh, come on, you have to have more of a sex drive than that. And she's like, nope, I do not. And for some situations, teens maybe don't always have those same kind of raging hormones, but Venus definitely did and was suppressing them. She will go on to admit many years later that she had, quote, thoughts at age nine and her childhood dream was to work in the adult industry but she felt ashamed of her sexuality and her boobs for a long time she also got some hate for bra shaming after she went so far as to make a full blog post about how bras are shameful and how she would only wear bras for grannies. She also had some pretty disturbing thoughts about keeping good grades and boyfriends and how they would get in the way when she was around the same age. Another reason that people accused Marge of sexualizing her daughter was because she posted videos with edited thumbnails and suggestive tags. If Venus is so innocent and doesn't think about sexy time, why are there tags U15 and Junior Idol referencing soft corp? porn featuring girls 15 and younger. Hmm? This particular thumbnail caused a lot of drama due to the very obvious suggestive nature along with the title, they're huge, and writing that says censored covering just above her cleavage. It seems while Marge was profiting off of Venus's body, she was also very much sheltering Venus, and Marge has always been quite concerned with Venus's purity. Her Tumblr is where we first get some insight into Venus's eating habits, as well as her elevating body dysmorphia, which will come into play many years later. Her answers did sound like they came from her, but they were very likely coming from a manipulated mindset, much like this interview where Venus can be seen listening to somebody off screen before adjusting her answers. The journalist shares, I'm about to move on with a new question, but pause because I hear Venus is consulting with someone in the background. After some muted chatter, Venus speaks up again. Oh, I didn't mean disco was club, I mean sports clubs. No things like that. That's not good. I hadn't thought she meant a nightclub, but for Venus's mother, clarification is warranted because controlling their daughter and client's image is paramount. So how much time do you spend on all of it, I ask? I do it every time, always, she says matter-of-factly. Wow, so you spend all day online, I ask? I hear people talking to her in the background again, and she quickly corrects herself. Not the whole day, but I do it for like one hour. I ask Margaret what steps she's taking to protect her daughter from online strangers and she is aggressively defensive. The question doesn't make sense, she complains, and what can online people do anyway, she asks. Are they going to reach through the computer to grab her? She adamantly denies, along with her daughter, that there isn't any contingent of men out there even watching Venus's videos, let alone wanting to harm her in any way. No, that's a rumor. I know my stats and only teen girls watch my video. It's just like, oh, freaky men watch your videos to bully me. But I know my stats and I know I'm not attracting anyone weird. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Venus also does a lot of defending her mom because unsurprisingly, her mom was getting a lot of backlash for allowing and even encouraging her daughter to dress provocatively, regardless of intention. Venus was saying, she's not a racist mom, she's a cool mom. Not like a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. <laughs> Okay, but she seems pretty racist though. I guess it's okay though, because Margaret says that normal healthy people are reasonably a little bit racist, even though everyone has all kinds of friends, so that explains it. She had some fans though, and she gave some ironic advice to a parent asking about their child being interested in Japanese culture. Your child has an own 
personality and if you break it, then you will break your child and you love this idea more than your child. So get your shit together, love your child instead of a fantasy. In 2012, the mother-daughter duo had their first TV appearance where Venus was asked questions and then Margot gave the answers and plugged up her daughter's young virgin years when asked about feminism. As Venus's fame was escalating, Margot and Venus moved to London. Unfortunately, Margot was unable to find a school for Venus to attend, so began her homeschooling. This was definitely a contributor to her lack of a social life and too much extra time spent with her mother. Venus was adamant that she had IRL friends, but Marge admitted to interviewers that she did not. I don't totally understand why they made the move to London or why it wasn't possible to put her in a school somewhere, but I don't know much about the school system there. Who knows? There are some speculations about Margot trying to escape tax evasion and that's why they were moving so much, which is less bad than when they were leaving London where it's alleged that they left because many neighbors were calling Child Protective Services. All I know is that Margaret liked it there, but she wouldn't recommend it. I liked London, but it's a big city. It's just the kind of city that it's not that kind of city I would recommend. While Venus was being the doll queen of Tumblr, she was selected for a modeling competition for a Chinese company called Bodyline, which is known for their very affordable Lolita style outfits and accessories. Luckily, ownership changed in 2018, but at the time, Bodyline was owned by someone named Mr. Yan. Mr. Yan was already known for holding several of these model contests, which many speculated were used to find himself a Western wife. He was not known for being a comforting father figure, to put it kindly. Bish be creepy. This is honestly such a long story, especially if you add in all the background info about Bodyline and Mr. Yan. If you would like me to talk more about it, I'd be happy to, just let me know. But I am gonna put a couple of articles and posts up on the screen, I just won't say it out loud. So if you'd like to read it, it's available to you. So basically what we know is Mr. Yan's super creepy and it's very curious that Marge was trying so hard to get Venus to win this competition and that she was willing to send her 15 year old daughter alone to Japan to work with this dude. It was speculated that Marge was doing this very much on purpose with the hopes that Mr. Yan would be interested in marrying Venus. And she even messaged the people at Bodyline and was like, hey, just so you know, Venus is single. And they were like, uh, okay, thanks. Mr. Yan body shamed Venus quite a lot, even though she was never big, but he was super concerned about her weight for some reason. And even said that Marge and Venus would have to sign a contract that they're not lying about her weight, even though I'm pretty sure that Marge was because Bodyline heard a rumor that if you're a liar liar your pants will catch fire and they had too much important merchandise even though I'm pretty sure they didn't sell pants. They broke off the deal once because the liability form basically said that if Venus shows up and she's heavier than they're saying then they're gonna have to pay for the airfare and hotel and that they wouldn't end up doing the shoot. I get wanting the models to be a sample size but like can you not be so hard on this girl? He even told her to her face that she would have to lose weight and diet before the shoot and she said that she was scared of doing that because if she lost weight she would get wrinkles. This girl was already going through it and did not need more reasons to be concerned about her weight but she did end up going on the trip. She flew all the way out there to Japan by herself to get her photo taken by a bunch of strangers. It also was not a very glamorous trip. She had to fly business class. She stayed in a two-star hotel. She didn't get paid. She only got a nice dinner after she was done with work, which she knew about in advance and to my knowledge she didn't complain about. But it's the whole thing was painted to be this like Cinderella story and Venus was almost too famous for it because they specifically wanted to choose people who wouldn't otherwise get such an experience. But she did the shoot, they go out to dinner and some karaoke and she sang this song that I don't know how to pronounce but it means brutality angel and she sang it and it was fine but then somebody else sang the same song right after and this was not acceptable Venus was not very happy so then she went up and did that same song again this time with some more dancing and really committing to this performance and people were peeing their pants with laughter but what can I say Venus needs to be the very best like no one ever was by the way around the same time Marge was also showing something off. Not talent, of course. Her dreadlocks. Sorry, her hashtag white girl dreads. Apparently she was dating a Jamaican guy and she thought, you know what, I'm gonna be the dreadlock lady and gonna make some white person dreads specifically. And it looked, um a certain way. No one is surprised. Some of Venus's most famous videos are how to look Japanese and how to look Korean. The day after the photo shoot, Mr. Yan had his birthday party at Disneyland Japan and everybody went. 
Venus tweeted that she was going to be there and she had some fans show up. She originally wasn't supposed to have any interviews or record anything, but she ended up taking lots of photo and video and demanded an interview. And Mr. Yan said, fine, but you can't use any of it without permission. <laughs> but of course she did. And Bodyline was upset, rightfully so, because her video and statements about the experience were not exactly painting Bodyline in the best light. For example, she was telling people that Mr. Yan admitted to smelling her clothes when really that was not what was happening at all. It wasn't that he was going around like sniffing her clothes for fun. It was just that they had to throw out all of the clothes because they smelled horrible of BO. Marge and Venus are infamously known for not having the best hygiene and that's not something that really gets better. Margot is sometimes called maggot because it sounds like her name and because people really hate her, like really hate her. But it may have also come from this tweet about bathing in the dirt like a bird. The best though is that at some point in the future, Marge makes a video of her taking a bath. Wonderful, good job. Except she's doing her laundry at the same time in the bath with her and she shaves her legs. I guess it's saving water, but that shit ain't clean. So yeah, Bodyline, not super pleased about this. Unfortunately for them, Margot is brilliant and she would not hear any of their complaints, literally because she hung up the phone when they tried to express them. And she wrote in the description of the video that no privacy complaints would be accepted. So checkmate. I have the letter from Bodyline rolling across the screen right now. If you wanna read it, I do suggest slowing down the video and the settings. But the other th few things of note I'll mention. First, Venus was begging for her and her mom to be hired in some capacity by Bodyline, but they didn't have a need at the time, and so she kept being rejected. Didn't stop her from asking. And the company said that she could turn her tears on and off like a tap. She said her mom's not working at the moment, and the two of them are both relying on Venus's YouTube revenue. And also, Venus is not in school. She said that it was too expensive, so she gave up. Last part of this that I'll mention is that Margot tried to convince Bodyline that they published the wrong bust size. Uh, they didn't. <laughs> Margot ended up admitting that she's like, well, if you tell them it's this size, then people will assume that she's more Barbie-like and then you'll make more money. And they were like, but we need people to know what the clothes are going to look like on their measurements, so we're not reprinting these. They actually even ended up taking the pictures down early. Along with the body line questions on Tumblr, I found this one where somebody is asking how Venus feels about her mom editing a picture to make her boobs bigger and sending it to some creep. I thought this was being sent to Mr. Yan at first when I read this, but it turns out it wasn't. It just was sent to some other random creep on the internet, which why, how, what, no. Who does this? Why did you do this? She's 15. Don't do this. This is, no, don't do this. Venus can't keep friendships. Venus can't keep friendships. Venus can't keep friendships. I wonder who's at fault. Should I make a theme song for every section? Let me know how much I shouldn't in the comments below. Anyways, Venus can't keep friendships. If you're wondering why, I'll tell you. This bitch, this bitch. Unstoppable. It started with this girl named Becky. <laughs> Becky said that she would dance with Venus, and guess what? A bitch never danced with Venus. And thus began Marge's vendetta against anybody who tried to befriend Venus, or anyone who tried to use Venus's fame, or anyone who tried to talk to Venus. You know, I think manipulative Marge just wanted Venus all to herself. Marge enjoys keeping Venus isolated. And if she can't keep Venus away from people, she'll keep people away from Venus. Because Becky wouldn't quit playing games with Venus's heart, Marge wrote about the consequences, saying, We didn't say anything about Becky. She started to bully Venus so hardly that she lost her hair, 5 kgs, and self-harmed. And then she said, Of course, nobody told her to do so, so it's nobody's fault. Except, in the last sentence, I pretty much said it was Becky's fault for being such a bully. Becky, you're a bully, and it's your fault. Nobody knows if Venus really did self-harm, but either way, this is a super not okay thing to say to a child. But I found this picture of Marge and Becky and made a realization, does she not look like Vanessa, the human that Ursula turns into in The Little Mermaid, except obviously like a real human version, not a cartoon? I feel like she looks exactly like her. She also kind of looks like she wants to pull an Ed Gein and wear this girl's skin like pajamas. I suppose what I'm trying to say is nobody should be surprised when Marge does something evil. Next up was this girl named Kelsey. 
She used to go by Kimono Time. Now she just goes by her name, Kelsey Ellison. She went through a living doll sort of phase as well. At a convention, a photographer asked to take a picture of Kelsey and Venus together, which Marge was super not okay with, and she dragged Venus away while yelling in some foreign language that Kelsey didn't understand, which obviously would leave her with not a great impression. And she talked about the story of what happened, but she didn't say who it was until a bunch of trolls were like, say who it was. And by a bunch of trolls, I'm almost positive it was a bunch of sock puppet accounts that Marge made to start shit. So finally, Kelsey said Venus's name, but she also apologized publicly on Venus's wall on Facebook, which was not accepted by Marge at all. Marge posted this very vile rant about how Kelsey's a liar and she sucks and she's rude and also that she should get a job. She kind of poked fun at her for having a prosthetic eye. What kind of insecurity do you have to have to mock a teenager for having a prosthetic eye? Especially because Marge's job is basically doing everything she possibly can to avoid getting a job. After some sort of scandal, a fan named Xiao made a video defending Venus. And at first Venus was like, thank you. And they had a nice little private chat and everything was fine. And then all of a sudden Venus blocked Xiao and Xiao was very hurt and confused. And it turned out that it was Marge that blocked Xiao on Venus's account because she thought that Xiao making that defense video wasn't because she was defending Venus, it was because she was trying to be a clout chaser. Then Xiao made a video about the block and how she was hurt about it, and this led Marge to create a bunch of sock puppet accounts that had Xiao's name in them, and she actually ended up doxing Xiao Xiao at least used this to her advantage. She did an interview, she made some videos, she talked all about this. Xiao even showed the email correspondence between her and Marge where Marge was pretending to be an agent for the family and claiming that it was not Marge who was cyberbullying Xiao. So this is the long ass email that her agent sent to me and here's my reply. It's kind of laughably bad, which is probably why Marge felt the need to go the extra mile by posting that Shia was threatening to murder Venus and her mother, and also Marge went all the way down to the police station to put in a report and hold up a victim card, literally playing the victim. She's standing there with a lot of confidence for a woman who's pretending to be a teenager online so that she can bully other teenagers online. Then there was Anastasia, who made a couple videos with Venus, but didn't end up liking the way she looked in the videos. So she messaged Venus trying to get her to take the video down, but Venus wasn't responding. So after 20 messages, Anastasia filed a complaint to get the video down, but Marge filed a counterclaim and the video was restored. Marge has a very strange habit of buying domain names of people's names or usernames just seemingly so that they can't have it and she'll just pay for these for years and hoard them for no apparent reason. She also put some lovely racist information as she filed some information for Xiao, wonderful. Marge put out a statement saying that she was the one who blocks people for Venus, pretty much anyone doing some sort of self-promotion, and she wrote, you can be jelly as much as you want, it will not help you make friends, which I don't need your friendship advice, but thanks Marge, no thank you. We'll talk about some of Venus's future friendships and relationships in another segment, but basically she's not the best when it comes to maintaining friendships or relationships of really any kind. I suppose when you learn from somebody like Marge, what can you expect? But Venus has to take some responsibility when Marge is no longer able to control her accounts. Venus says that she's too nice and she is too much of a pushover and she doesn't put up boundaries and some of that might be true, but at the same time, like one of our faves, Gabby Hanna, insincerely accepted, sometimes you gotta admit when you're the common denominator. In 2015, Venus began dating a fan named Manaki, aka Mana or Mana Senpai. Shortly after, but probably unrelated, she hit 1 million on YouTube. There were mixed reactions to the relationship as Manaki, um, he kind of stalked her and had a crush on her since he saw her on TV when she was 13 and he was 19. The day before the Bodyline Disney trip when she was 15 and he was 21, Venus tweeted that she would be at Disneyland and he went to meet her. They couldn't really interact since Venus wasn't allowed to talk to fans, but she saw him and he managed to get her attention online after that. They became a couple quickly. At least in the beginning, Margot was very encouraging and she hoped that she could marry Venus off to him. But two weeks later, they seemed to have broken up and the video titles of videos they made together were changed from My Boyfriend as 
blank to my ex-boyfriend does blank. And Venus responded to did you break up comments with really rude accusations like he drank too much and kept things secret from me. And responding to where's your boyfriend now with I'm not sure but he's probably still a factory worker living in a small room of a shared house of factory workers. Then Margot responded to an inquiry about Maniki with a pedophile factory worker stalked and pressured her and is still pressuring her. And first of all, he's a poor guy, never studied, but this isn't what Venus and I would care about. So then why are you bringing it up, Midge? Then continuing, but he was telling me he is dreaming of making love to her, and if Venus doesn't love him, then I'm beautiful too, and that Venus has a cute round ass, and he all the time was looking to her ass, it's on video. It's later speculated that Marge changed the titles to drive a wedge between the two, and maybe was behind some of these insults, but either Venus or Marge gave many other excuses under Venus's account for changing the titles to ex-boyfriend, including, I had to change the title because we had no chemistry, and I changed the title because I should find someone better and I decided to change the title because I thought there are smart, good-looking, lovely guys out there who know how to behave toward a woman. So logically what happened next is Venus focused on her studies and found a steady job. Psych! Then surprise, she and Maniki got married! Venus said, when we wrote X, we actually got engaged. It sounded like a breakup, but it wasn't. Sorry. And she updated her video titles again to say, my ex-boyfriend does blank in parentheses because he's my husband now. Oh wait, they're not married because of a paperwork error. Ugh, it gets really confusing here. Supposedly they tried to get married, but then some of the paperwork wasn't filed correctly. And then Venus changed her mind about getting married because she was only 19 and hasn't known him long. Plus I guess Maniki's kisses are gross. But then for some reason, Marge still got the paperwork sorted. So they were married, but she didn't tell her fans until she took a picture with Maniki visiting her one day. And she's like, yay, look who came to visit me. And everyone's like, wait, what, they're together? And it's weird because Margaret also says that at first Maniki didn't want to get married either, but then Venus was the one who had asked Margaret to ask Maniki to marry her. But they also still won't call each other husband and wife, they call each other boyfriend and girlfriend because they're so young and I guess old ladies make them feel pressured into having kids according to Venus. We are boyfriend and girlfriend actually, we're married people, especially old ladies, are gonna be like... <laughs> Although Marge thinks it's an absolutely unacceptable lie to call a husband a boyfriend. Tighten up, Venus. Okay, tighten those seatbelts because things are about to go downhill real fast. In 2016, after Maniki and Venus married, Margarine began her hate campaign against Maniki. Venus posted a picture of a stuffed bunny on Instagram with the caption, I just wanted to post some pictures of Maniki visiting me in Seoul, but my mom keeps deleting them. She also says that he brainwashed me, but... I don't think so. Keep this bunny in mind, it comes back later. It seems Marge has some hostility about this relationship due to not letting Venus post, but it starts to become very clear that Marge has a lot more control over Venus's posting than we originally thought. Then, Venus goes missing. Marge begs for help. Bring Venus home, she cried, hashtag stripping down her cheeks as she sobs. She posts some stuff about Maniki being a pedophile and a psychopath who was trying to get Venus to leave YouTube and move to Japan to become a nail salon worker. Only she's not actually missing, she just left home with Maniki. Venus said that she did tell her mom and even planned a time to meet up later to exchange some of Venus's belongings, but Margot says she escaped in the middle of the night. Although she has also said later that actually Venus left in the middle of the day. No idea who's telling the truth about whether or not Marge knew, but obviously Marge is lying either way because she can't keep her story straight. Marge absolutely loses it from here forward. At this point, Venus is 19 and married, so it's not super surprising that she would want to leave home to move in with her man instead of staying and living with her mom. However, Marge is rapidly crumbling while simultaneously raging and spewing venom all over the internet. Not just simply due to her empty nest, mind you. She doesn't miss Venus. She even says so several times. Marge says some super crazy shit while, at least for the most part, Venus keeps her mouth closed. Margot's story of what happened changes a million times and it's hard to keep up with her and she starts losing some supporters. Then she makes her first big move. While she still had access to Venus's account, she posted a picture picture of supposedly Venus and some man that is not Maniki, though some people speculate that it's actually not Venus, but maybe Marge in Venus's pajamas and a wig, which really pissed off Margot. Marge said that Venus cheated on Maniki four days after the wedding and that's why Maniki came and took her to Japan so he could keep an eye on his wife. Marge said that she bought tickets for Soul Countdown on New Year's Eve, but Venus wouldn't go, boo-hoo, and Marge went all by her lonesome. And when she got home, she saw Venus in bed. Oh, ah! 
with Marge's boyfriend's best friend, <gasps> which led to her boyfriend breaking up with her. <gasps> The caption says, My mom also decided to put my whole shit online and later deleting all my accounts. She has several degrees and could pay for my shit since I was a baby. Thank goodness Venus threw that brag about her mom in at the end. Yep, that's a realistic way for that caption that was written by Venus to end. With the style of broken English in this caption, it is very obviously Marge. Someone asks, how is this cheating? And Marge said, it's physical enough, okay? And then somebody more specifically asked if they actually had sex. And Marge says, no. And then someone says, Said, well, why'd you take a pic? And she was like, because I'm mad and I wanted to tell on her and why wouldn't I take a pic? Now, to be clear, it is quite possible that Venus did cheat on Maneki. There's a lot of speculation about her actual feelings towards him because people think that it's possible she married him for a visa. <laughs> Some people think that Marge was setting up the marriage so that she and Venus could get a visa so she could live in Japan too, but when she realized that the spousal visa only goes to the spouse, then she sabotaged the plan. Plus, Venus alludes to some unethical sexual behaviors in a future video, so who knows. But at the time, no one was taking Marge too seriously. Midge also released some private messages between Venus and a mystery man. Venus says that she doesn't want to make the same mistake, but she does want to go out for drinks, and the man said that he he doesn't think it's a good idea and that he's disappointed. Pretty convincing, but it could be Marge having a conversation with Marge through Venus's account and a sock puppet. She makes a video that opens with one of her favorite lines. I really didn't want to make this video, but I feel like you're basically forcing me, so I'm gonna do it. Yes, because a bunch of teenagers online can force a grown woman into sitting down and talking shit about her daughter, leaving no other option. Marge explains her side of the situation, and Venus just posts that it's frustrating when people lie about you online. Here begins Marge's slew of attempts to ruin Venus and get her hands back on the YouTube money. Marge claims Venus left her with nothing and stole everything from her, including her laptop with all her work and data, and even though she actually has several hard drives in her possession with photos and footage, she continues to post about how she has nothing. Venus said that she had to take the laptop because she wanted to change the password so Marge couldn't post as her anymore, which is fair, but Marge felt like her whole life and livelihood was on the laptop, which frankly is also fair. At First, Margot used the cloud to access the laptop to spy on Venus, which is how she posted these photos of Venus pretending to escape from Maneki, I guess. But then Margot bricked the laptop so nobody could use it. Venus made a video explaining to everybody what was going on from her side of the story and admits to some abuse that she experienced at home, and she is confident that she made the right decision by leaving. No regrets about getting out of Mama Midge's bed. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. They slept in the same bed together until Venus was at least 16. Venus tells a story about about when she didn't want to do one of her mom's video ideas, and so Marge threatened to harm herself and held a knife up to her wrist, but then threw the knife at 13-year-old Venus's head. Luckily, she missed, and the knife got stuck in the painting on the wall behind Venus. Of course, Midge is gonna deny this in various ways. My favorite defense was when she said it was rude to ask if she tried stabbing Venus, and that we need to shift our focus and ask ourselves if Maneki is trying to stab her. Also, she said that there would have been some sort of police report about a 13-year-old who survived an attempted stabbing. Marge says this kind of thing a lot. She is very adamant that she never laid a hand on Venus. Eh. She disgustingly posted a picture of a bruised children, which I've blurred here, but she did not blur it, to be clear. They're all covered in bruises and wounds, and she was like, see, Venus never looked like this, therefore she was never abused. However, yeah, she didn't look that bad, but there has been speculation about bruising in Venus's videos for a long time and physical abuse is far from the only type of abuse and it's going to be very hard to prove that you didn't abuse her at all. Venus says one of the biggest reasons for running away was because Marge wanted her to get a divorce and was saying bad stuff about Maneki and that she knew she'd never find anyone like her Manitan again, to which Marge replied, you will never find someone like Manitan who stalks you since five years. Then Marge gets very sad and dramatic and she says, Venus applied with me on Monday for a longer visa here. Together, with me. Venus cut me off. I hope at least you guys are happy. And by the way, Venus can log into all my accounts. We both could, helping each other. Venus left to Japan without telling me. I don't know where she is. She paid for school, opened bank account here. She didn't tell me. Maneki told her she will not be able to finish university. Maneki told her he can make cuter photos than I. She is still a virgin and was so diligent at school. All my things from warehouse storage will also go to Maneki. He took me literally everything. If you have any questions, ask.
because I'm going into the river. Here starts the first round of suicide baiting for Marge. She says that she wants to do it in a way that doesn't make a mess and actually works instead of causing injury. But then she gets upset when somebody comes in and defends her and is like, this woman's possibly suicidal and you guys are insulting her. What is wrong with humanity? And Marge is like, no, I'm not. Like, it's a huge insult that's outrageous, which it's not, especially when you have such a descriptive thing that you said. Marge says she's not suicidal. She just thinks Venus wants her to be. I don't know if she's saying Venus wants her to be dead or if Venus wants her to be suicidal. That's a little bit unclear. But she'll post a lot about just going into the river. I don't know which river. Maybe the one in the underworld that Hercules rescues Meg from where everyone's spirits are old and swirling around. Another time that Marge side baits, she admits that she faked her death by waiting a few days to come back online because she wanted to see if Venus would care. It seems either she didn't or she knew her mom was just trying to get attention and didn't want to give in to it. And yes, she did call Venus out saying she's a virgin as if she's like this very pure thing while having just talked about her being a cheater. Venus posts a bunch of photos and videos and seems very happy with her new toys, including Manakee, but there were always rumors of something negative going on behind the scenes. What it was would vary. They they had a lot of hate to start because of Manakee's creepy backstory, but Venus says that the age gap isn't that big of a deal since she is emotionally mature. Spoiler alert, she's super not. I think she just feels like she is because she's been through so much pain at this point and hasn't really been able to develop a sense of self. Almost like her childhood just ended a long time ago. The problem though was never the six year age gap. It's not that they have years between them, it's the fact that he was an adult crushing on a child and people were also worried how many ways he could manipulate her. Marge starts trying to convince everyone that Manaki is a dangerous villain holding Venus captive and manipulating her like his little puppet, though if he was playing Geppetto behind the scenes, he certainly was not the only one. Still, Marge was just really shitting on him, at several points pretending to be him, like when she made this email address and pretended that he wrote to her about Venus having no human feelings and not caring if she's a bad person. She also made a fake Instagram with the same username and use that to show that Manaki is agreeing with Marge about different things. If the husband agrees with the mom, then that's two against one. It must be true. She also claims that when he and Venus first started dating, Marge was the one to create his Instagram and set it up and like be a social media manager and got him to 10k followers. And then she also bought him his domain name and it was supposed to be for him. But then why years later does she still have it under her own list of domains. At one point when the supposed breakup was going down, Marge and Venus did post about being hacked by someone who can't handle a breakup. And now she's like, yeah, well, he was trying to hack into the account that I made him even though I had shut it down because he wanted to gain my affection. Huh? Eventually, she stops exclusively dragging Manaki for being the evil demon boy who stole her doll and starts spewing hate at both of them. She said, actually, Venus was the abuser and she's a psychopath who wants me to die. Marge said, Venus is a lying, emotionless, psychopathic, narcissistic, murderous prostitute akin to Hitler and Charles Manson. She actually compares Venus to Hitler twice. She has made these kinds of claims a lot. I don't know that she fully understands what a psychopath is. She's very confident about it though, so maybe. She said that when she took care of Venus, she never had to go to the hospital and she never had anything in her teeth and that Venus would have developed further mentally if she stayed with her mother and now she's like a different person. She said when Venus lived with her, she was a fair amount of happy, healthy, good, but with Manaki, she's too damn happy. She looks like she's on meth. Does Marge think the only way to be this happy is to take meth? Because I think I might have a solution. Venus tried to make peace in some emails that Marge shared with the internet because that's what she does. And Venus was like, I love you, just stop being crazy. And Marge was like, mm, no, no thanks. And Venus is like, but I can like figure out a way to get you to Japan and we can figure this all out. Marge is like, nah. I'm good. The conversation about whether or not Manaki is a good guy will continue extensively for years to come, but for now, people liked seeing Venus happy and free. Most people can admit that the circumstances that brought them together are a little bit weird. There are some really sweet pictures of Venus with his cousin. Here she is with the family dog, Barry, v cute. At this point, it really just seemed like Venus was saved by them, especially Manaki's mom, who was so lovely. Venus put out a sweet video where she calls his mom and says how grateful she is to her. Venus was scared of leaving, but she knew she wanted to go, and Manaki didn't just buy her a ticket. He went from Japan to Korea, encouraged her, 
told her it would be okay and that it just hurts in the beginning and then took her on a flight with him like escorted her the whole way which i think is very supportive and marge thinks is horrifying marge complains that manaki is being used by his mom who wanted a daughter so she dressed him up like a girl but she does have a daughter so this is very confusing at some point there's a video that Venus and Maniki make together where somebody asks if Maniki is transgender and he's like, I don't know what that means. And so Venus explained it. And then Maniki was like, well, <laughs> the description doesn't fit, but I like the word. It's a cool word. It sounds like a superhero name. And they have a real cute little like superhero pose moment. Marge also hated on his mom for buying cookies from a street vendor and having the audacity to also eat them. Gross. Oh, except Marge wears clothes that she found in a dumpster. So, you know, whatever though. As Venus settled nicely into Japan, Marge continued a tornado of destruction of her own life. Marge tries to lure Venus out and get her to come back to the dark side, but it's just not working. Marge decides, you know, what a great idea it would be to just hang out around Venus's apartment building and then just, you know, kind of wait. She does this a few times also around his parents' house. Oh, but then she gets really smart and she thought ahead and she ambushed Maniki when he came from home from work. Yep, what a great idea. Oh, and she could film the whole thing and post the video, but then tell people that something completely different happened than what actually occurs in the video. What a fun, chill time and great idea. I bet that lady has tons of degrees, bachelors, masters, PhDs all over her temporary walls. Venus and Maniki both released statements about the situation on Instagram, and Marge said, I just wanted to bring them chocolate and save the YouTube channel. Why they gotta go and call the police? I only filmed because Maniki was being aggressive, and it wasn't for five minutes, it was for one minute. I don't think it really matters if it's five minutes or one minute, and I don't think they want your chocolate, but thank you. Thank you so much. At one point when Venus was feeling low and emotionally weak, she agreed to have a visit with Marge to celebrate Venus's birthday. But Marge took that as, I'm moving in, get ready to live with Mama Marge again, baby. And Venus and Maniki were like, wait, what? No, that's not happening. Later, they planned to exchange some of Venus's stuff at the airport where Marge tries to frame Maniki and Venus as thieves by telling them to pick up her backpack and take anything that belongs to Venus out of this luggage and tells Venus her panties and black stilettos will be in there. But then she straight up just grabs Venus by the wrist and I guess plan to just drag her by the wrist all the way back to Korea because she would not let go and then security had to break them all apart. And then obviously they refuse to spend any more time with her and they go their separate ways because bitch be acting crazy. Marge posts a sob story about how she's been left stranded at the airport by her traitor ex-daughter and also both of them punched her. Marge seems to be getting real close to a psychotic break here, just spouting off all sorts of things online, which never really stops. She is, I don't know what she's got running, but it seems like she's got to spend 24-7 just typing comments to people. But she made sure to provide proof that she wasn't physically harmed by those weak fools. How did she do this? Oh, by posting an airport bathroom post-shower nude selfie, of course, she said, hey, it's not pervy, okay? It's just evidence that I wasn't harmed. Plus, it could be evidence if there are any weight changes in the future from stress from this whole thing. And she says that she sent that picture to her ex and they broke up, fast turnaround, and she didn't want him to be able to leak it, so she leaked it herself. Girl, you wanted to post a nude. Okay, post a nude. You're a hot mom. Do it. It's maybe not what people want to casually see on their timeline, but if you want to post it, don't make it weird by making excuses. Commit, girlfriend. You've done it before. Where'd that confidence go? For some reason, people didn't believe that she showered at the airport. Actually, it might have just been that people didn't believe she showered, and the last nude didn't work. So, what did she do? She posted another one the next day. How does the second nude help when the first time wasn't believable? That's for Marge to know and for us to find strange. Well, trust me when I say that this is not even close to the end of it, nor the most exciting. So stay tuned. We'll be posting a follow-up video shortly. In the meantime, definitely make sure to let us know what you thought down below and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for having me. It meant so much for me to be here. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.